We were all hard at work, changing the powder and the berths, when the last man or two, and Long John along with them, came off in a shore boat. The cook came up the side like a monkey for cleverness. So he's like that. Like Yoda when he gets his lightsaber out. On deck. Lands like that. Like Dragon Ball. This crutch. And as soon as he saw what was doing, So ho, mates, says he. What's this? We're a changing of the powder, Jack, answers one. Who knows who that one was? Well, maybe it's that same like American extra from earlier. We're a changing of the powder, Jack, answers one. Why, ba? Why, by the powers, cried Long John. If we do, we'll miss the morning tide. My orders, said the captain shortly. Him and Long John, it'd be like that. Who say, all right, lads, who's had us move the powder? In the background. My orders. He comes into focus, he's like that. Long John's like that. Oh, your orders. Aye, aye, Captain. Like that, do you know what I mean? My orders. He's having none of it, Captain Smollett. My orders, said the captain surely. You may go below, my man. Oh, condescending, condescending. Hansel wants supper. So he's like, all right, we don't need your contribution. Get down. Get down the old. Get them, get them chicken Kievs in youth. These boys are hungry. Very hungry. So mind your business. Ah, oh, silly. Get them chicken Kievs in. He's just my uncle now. I've just made him my Uncle David. Get them chicken Kievs in, youth. Mm. He's a he's a, he's a cook, my uncle. He's a, he's a, that's his job, he's a cook. He ran a pub. Get them chicken... Go on. Aye, aye, sir, answered the cook. And touching his forelocks as his sort of, sort of kind of respect... Aye, aye, sir. So they're sussing each other out, these pair. They're sussing each other out. Get below, youth. Aye, aye, sir. And touching his forelock, he disappeared at once in the direction of the galley. He always leaps to, obeys his orders, Long John. That's a good man, Captain, said the doctor. Very likely, sir, replied Captain Smollett. He's now pulling the wool over his eyes. Easy with that, men. Easy. He ran on to the fellows who were shifting the powder, and then suddenly observing me, examining the swivel we carried amidships, a long brass nine. Uh, so that's a cannon. Big cannon. Here you, ship's boy, he cried. Out of that. Off with you to the cut and get some work. Go and get them potatoes peeled. And then as I was hurrying off, I heard him say quite loudly to the doctor, I'll have no favourites on my ship. I assure you, I was quite of the squire's way of thinking, and hated the captain deeply. <laughs>